Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past is one of the best things to come out of the 90s. It is, without a doubt, one of the best games ever made, period. You could easily put this in the top five best games of all time. All the praise you've heard about this game is absolutely accurate. It really is that good. I mean, I can't believe I even need to make a review. I guarantee you 99.9% .9 of the people who watch my videos have played this game. This isn't so much a review to tell you about the game as much as to remind you how great it was. Really everything about this game is near perfect. I mean, everything from the graphics to the music to the gameplay, everything is right on the money. They throw the darts at the dartboard and it always hits the bullseye. This game's OST is so good, you sometimes actually want to get killed just so you can hear the music of the game over screen. In 1992, this was just the pinnacle of graphics. I mean, I would be hard-pressed to find a 16-bit game in 1992 with better graphics than this. But it's not just the fantastic graphics, it's how much actual content is in this game. Now, the Kingdom of Hyrule, the world map you're playing on, is basically a biodome, buddy, with all kinds of different terrains, almost any kind of terrain you can think of in one kingdom. The game just begs to be explored, not just because it's huge and beautiful and there's all sorts of different easter eggs all around. It's also because that's the point of the game. You're supposed to go into all corners and explore every crevice of this beautiful world to complete all the major tasks in the game. When you're not running around the world map, most of the time you will be in some kind of dungeon or sometimes even a cavern. This is where the majority of the combat, or at least the hard combat, that comes in, whether it be tough enemies or the tough bosses in the game. To help you out with the combat portion of the game is all sorts of different weapons. From super fast boots that make you power up and then lunge through an enemy like a really powerful football player, to a boomerang, to bombs, to a bow, to magical spells, there is all sorts of ways to defeat the varied enemies in the game. And of course, there's also strategy to keep in mind. It takes different kinds of strategies to defeat different kinds of add-ons and bosses. Some enemies are susceptible to one kind of attack or one kind of weapon, and some enemies can be completely immune to one kind of attack or weapon. A lot of it will be trial and error, but because the game is just so much fun, you don't mind the trial and error. But sometimes, like most action or turn-based RPGs of this era, the game can leave the realm of common sense and start following its own path of rationality that just doesn't make much sense. And this gets especially hard when you're in a dungeon with multiple levels and multiple things you have to do to progress to the end. I'll give you an example of the first time I got completely lost. I was running around the Eastern Castle. I basically visited most every room I could get to at the time and I just didn't know how to progress. I was stuck in this room where uh, these spinning, I believe they're called anti-fairies, were guarding a chest or some kind of vase that uh, I'm almost certain had a button under it that I needed to use to progress, but I didn't know how to get there. Uh, what I had to do is clear all the uh, enemies on screen before these uh, anti-fairies uh, start flying around I can actually get to the button. But I couldn't kill one enemy because his armor was way too strong, like literally my sword attacks did nothing. But apparently these enemies are susceptible to vases being thrown at them. I had no idea. I'm using common, you know, rational sense here. I'm thinking if you can hurt something with a powerful swing of your sword, throwing a vase at it, I don't think that's gonna hurt it, but apparently it does. So, you know, it's just one of those things that you figure out after playing for a while and trying different things, concocting different spells. The gameplay is incredibly smooth and you have complete precise control of your character. If you get hit, it is no one's fault but your own. A Link to the Past is just an action-adventure RPG that is surpassed by few or some would say none. It is pretty close to perfect as far as Super Nintendo games go. It gets an official Stan Birdman rating of 9.5 out of 10. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, my friends.
Thank <laughs> you. 